Hey there YouTube, what's going on? It's Adam here with Retro Repairs and time for another repair video. So what I've got here is a uh, Game Boy bundle that I recently picked up and I think this cost me about 20 bucks. I'm going to show you what we've got here. So we've got an original Game Boy and physically it's in pretty good shape. Um, it's got the back cover which is always nice. Um, not a ton of scratches on the screen. The plastic itself isn't yellowed so Pretty decent looking uh, console actually. Um, got a couple manuals, so instruction booklet for the actual console itself, instruction for F1 race, and an instruction for a four play adapter, four player adapter, sorry. Here we have said four player adapter. Um, haven't tested to see if this works or not, but uh, that's not what this video is going to be about anyways. Um, the adapter for the link cable, so that it converts from the smaller size to the larger size. I believe the Game Boy Color, or Pocket maybe, started using the smaller size connector. So the original Game Boy, how the heck do we open this? There we go. The original one used the, uh, the large size one like that, so... Um, I actually have never seen a Game Boy that still had this cover on it, so that's also kind of cool. And then, got a copy of Pokemon Crystal, which is Game Boy Color game, so that will not work on this console, but it'll work on a Game Boy Color and a Game Boy Advance in the case, which is a nice touch. And then F1 Race. So again, looks to be in really good shape. A um, little bit of something there. Pins are good condition. They look really good. So um, all in all, for 20 bucks, very pleased with this purchase. Um, oh, there's a link cable right here. So it's all t intertwined with this. So it does come with the link cable as well. So 20 bucks cannot go wrong at all with that purchase. So let's take a look at this Game Boy and see what we need to do with it. So I have already popped some batteries in here. So let's just turn her on. Let's turn the contrast all the way down just so it's dark. So you do see there's a number of vertical lines here and the screen actually doesn't display all the way to the edge. That's a pretty common problem with these this vintage of Game Boy. So um, let's make sure it plays a game. All right, so Nintendo logo is coming through nicely. And looks like it's working pretty well, so let's just test the buttons out. And looks like it works pretty well. So all those buttons are pretty responsive. Um, it's reading games just fine. So let's uh, let's crack this open and show you how to fix that display right there. So first thing we're going to need to do is get a tri-wing screwdriver bit. Well, firstly, actually take these batteries out. And then you're going to need a tri-wing screwdriver bit. So there are six batteries that need to come out. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's do that. And through the magic of video, this has been, these screws have been loosened and are ready to just fall out. And still one that did not come out. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna carefully lift this up and you wanna be careful because there is a ribbon connector underneath here, which connects the display 
to the uh, the main board on the back here. So we're just going to pull that down and gently pull straight to remove that. Now we've got the Game Boy in two halves. We've got the back half, which is actually fine. So I'm not going to disassemble this right now because I've really got nothing to do here. Um, the console is actually pretty clean, so I'm not going to give it a full soak. The battery terminals are in pretty good shape. There's no corrosive uh, battery acid sitting on it. So I'm going to leave this whole half intact and I'm going to focus on this front part. So in order to remove the board here, I need to switch to a Phillips screwdriver bit. So I need to find my bit. There we go. So take the tri-wing out, put in the Phillips bit. And then we have, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws. So let's go ahead and remove all of those. And once again, through the magic of video editing, those screws have just magically disappeared. So now you need to lift this board off and there is a little bit of adhesive on here, so we do need to be careful with it. Just gonna gently start peeling it back. You might need to gently kind of use your screwdriver here to lift it up from the top. There we go. And this is what we've got. So this is the front of the board. This is the, um, the display right here. Um, and what we need to do now is start peeling back this rubber that's underneath it. Oh, it just came right off just like that. And we can set that off to the side. Um, be careful if you happen to touch anything to the display, try and clear it off. You just don't want to get smudges or dust and stuff on here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is fire up the old uh, soldering iron and you're gonna let it get up to temperature. Um, now, what we're doing here is we're not gonna be actually soldering anything together per se, but we're gonna be using the soldering iron for its heat. So I'm gonna show you exactly what we need to do here. Just getting the batteries ready. So right along this edge right here is where this um, ribbon connector connects. And this feeds the data lines going into the LCD and it um, gives some vertical, gives a picture in a vertical way. Um, there's also a set of contacts along here which feed the horizontal part of that uh, LCD matrix. And together they combine to turn pixels on or off. This is just a monochrome display, so there's no color, there's no, there's not much else there. It's on or off or um, a particular gradient, we'll say, a degree of grayness. So um, what happens over time is along here, these contacts start to disconnect from the rest of the display. So we need to basically reflow that using the soldering iron. So what I'm going to do is reconnect the display to the back of the console right here. Oh, come on, there we go. Alright. Okay, so we can put that kind of off to the side just like so and turn it on. Um, turn the contrast all the way up so that you're seeing these dark black lines. And then we're going to take the soldering iron and slowly go over top of these. You see when I put pressure on, these lines appear and disappear. Same thing over here. So we just need to make sure that connection is strong again. So now that the soldering iron is up to heat, I've got it about 650 degrees. Um, we're just going to use this and... Just simply rub the soldering iron up and down along these contacts. And you might note that it will start to 
make either the lines appear or disappear as they start to um, reflow that solder connection. I'm actually gonna try and get some of this adhesive off. There's still a little bit of residual adhesive and I don't really like that there. There we go. So that doesn't need to be there. We'll put that back over with that rubber piece. Um, so anyways, back to this, let's zoom in a little bit better. How about that? That way we can see pretty much the full display. And then, so just gonna take the soldering iron, touch it in place over top of the connector You don't want to hold it for too, too long. Just kind of going back and forth. This ribbon connector is fairly heat resistant, so it should not, um, should not melt. It might leave a little bit of a mark. We should be for the most part, all right. And you'll see that a lot of these are starting to come back now. Better, there's still a little bit of a line there. Um, so we're gonna try a bit more. Almost there. Let that cool and looks like there's still one connection still on this side. All right, looks like that side's all right. So now back to the bottom side here. Got the glass in the way. Okay, so that appears to be, oh, there we go, coming back. So just touch that up a bit. And we're gonna let it cool just to make sure that those lines are gonna be permanently gone. Okay, so that's looking not too bad. Let's turn that off. Let's zoom out a little bit. And let's try this again. So turn her on. We've got a nice fully black screen. If we change the contrast a bit, we should get now a clear screen without black lines on it. Let's try it with a game.
looks pretty good. Turn the contrast all the way up and we've got a full black screen. No bad, uh, no bad pixels there whatsoever. So that looks pretty good. Let's, uh, let's reassemble. So for reassembly, what we're going to do is remove the screen part again, put it off to the side. Um, then I'm going to grab that front shell. So while I have this open, I like to do a little bit of preventative maintenance. So what I like to do, grab yourself a piece of paper and I'm going to take these pads out. These are always the culprits on old controllers and old consoles that start uh, to lose their how the buttons connect. So first thing we want to do, grab some isopropyl alcohol. I like to use 99%. If you can't get 99, in a pinch you can use 70, but get the highest you possibly can. And just using a Q-tip, scrub these pads a little bit just to get any dust, dirt, grime, um, any buildup off of there. These are actually in really good shape, so there shouldn't be too much of an issue, but um, while I'm in here, I may as well do it. Next thing I like to do, grab a piece of paper like this, flip it over, put a small amount of pressure down, and just rub these pads on the piece of paper. You'll get some faint marks like this, and that's fine. That's what I'm hoping to do. But that's just going to even these out so there's no buildups or ridges or um, uneven contact. Um, these work by, these are conductive pads, so they work by completing the circuits on the board here to tell the uh, CPU that a button's being pressed. So if these are dirty, that's when buttons don't work. These are an easy fix usually and these are the culprit probably 90% of the time for no 99% of the time for bad buttons cool so let's throw these buttons back in the shell make sure that you're lining up these posts with the holes in these pads um, just so that everything's sitting in properly and it's flush gonna work properly once you reinstall everything And then I can set that to the side a little bit, get rid of the paper. Um, what we still need to do is reinstall this little rubber strip. So there's this adhesive that we pulled off, and I'm going to try and stick that back on. So I believe this was the bottom right here. So I'm going to try and just put that back into place the best that I can. Alternately, if you have some fine two-sided tape, you can also just use that. All right, so before I fully reassemble. I like to test it one more time just because when you put that piece of adhesive on, if you put pressure on it and one of those connections weren't quite good enough, you might run into issues. But here we still have a full black screen, so that tells me no problems. So let's disassemble this again, put the bottom part off to the side. Now we've just got the front part of the shell. So flip this over. I like to line up the speaker first and then the rest of the board should sit nicely in place. Give it a little bit of pressure so that it's sitting flush. Everything should um, really just kind of sit nicely into place. And then we've got 10 screws to reapply. So let's get on that. And just like that, those 10 screws are now reapplied. So we're going to flip it over and reattach that ribbon connector. Give it one more test. Make sure that those screws haven't put pressure anywhere they shouldn't. That looks good. Cool. So let's uh, let's fully reassemble this. Put those final six K screws on.
And there we have it. That should be all set to go. Cool, so that looks like it's in pretty good shape. We've got no extra lines going up and down the t from the bottom, so we are good to go. So like I said, um, not really an overly complex repair. You do need a soldering iron and just to take apart the console just to heat up those contacts. So um, if you do have yourself an original Game Boy like this, um, fixing those vertical lines, definitely something that uh, hopefully uh, this video can help you take care of doing. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope you're able to learn something from this and uh, maybe even revive one of your old Game Boys. So if you like the video, be sure to like it, um, subscribe to my channel, be among the first to get notifications when I release new stuff. Thanks a lot, and we will see you next time.